China's South to North water diversion project has made a significant step, the completion of the massive project's middle line. The challenging task of the water diversion project is actually the second largest relocation after the Three Gorges Dam project. China has always been a nation of bold ambitions, reshaping its geography to overcome challenges. Today, it faces a critical problem, water scarcity in the north. In response, China has launched the South to North Water Diversion Project, the largest water transfer scheme in history. Stretching thousands of kilometers, this engineering feat aims to provide a lifeline to the arid north. But how sustainable is it? Could this project be a turning point, or will it come with consequences too severe to ignore? Let's explore. Water scarcity in northern China is not a new problem. For centuries, the North has battled against dry conditions and limited water supplies. While the South is home to vast rivers like the Yangtze and countless tributaries, the North relies heavily on groundwater and smaller, less reliable water sources. This imbalance is stark. Over 80% of China's water is found in the southern regions, yet 40% of the country's population and much of its agriculture and industry are concentrated in the north. Beijing, Tianjin, and other northern cities have seen their populations and industries boom, placing unsustainable demands on water supplies. Over-extraction of groundwater has led to subsidence in some areas, causing land to sink and infrastructure to crack. Meanwhile, the Gobi Desert continues its march southward, encroaching on arable land and threatening the livelihoods of millions. An area the size of Luxembourg is swallowed by the desert every year, making it clear that the region's water challenges cannot be ignored. In 1952, Mao Zedong proposed a revolutionary idea, transferring water from the water-rich south to the parched north. He famously said, Water in the south is abundant, water in the north scarce. Let's borrow some. At the time, the idea seemed almost impossible to implement. The scale of such a project, combined with the technological limitations of the era, meant it remained a distant dream. However, as China's population and economy grew, so did the urgency to address its water crisis. Finally, in 2002, the Chinese government approved the South to North Water Diversion Project, marking the beginning of one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in history. The project is divided into three routes, each with unique challenges and objectives. The eastern route stretches over 1,100 kilometers, drawing water from the Yangtze River and transporting it north via the Grand Canal an ancient waterway that has been modernized for the project. This route relies on over 20 massive pumping stations to push water uphill, showcasing the complexity of the undertaking. The eastern route also supports major industrial cities like Tianjin and provides water for agriculture in the North China Plain, one of the country's key farming regions. The central route, often called the Grand Aqueduct, spans 1,200 kilometers and begins at the Danjiangku Reservoir. This route supplies Beijing, China's capital, and its surrounding areas with much-needed water. To enable gravity-driven flow, engineers raised the height of the Danjiangku Dam, significantly increasing the reservoir's capacity. However, this expansion came at a social cost, displacing over 300,000 people from their homes. The central route is critical, supplying water to around 20 million people and supporting key industries. The western route remains the most ambitious and controversial. It plans to divert water from the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau, home to the headwaters of many of Asia's great rivers, to the Yellow River. This route would cross some of the most challenging terrain on Earth, including high mountains and remote plateaus. It also raises geopolitical concerns, as the diverted water would impact downstream countries like India, Bangladesh, and Vietnam, which rely on these rivers for agriculture, industry, and daily life. The price tag for the entire project exceeds $70 billion, 
making it one of the most expensive water management projects ever attempted. But the financial cost is only the beginning. Socially, the project has had a profound impact on millions of people. In addition to the hundreds of thousands displaced by construction, local communities have faced disruptions to their way of life, with some regions experiencing water shortages as a result of the diversion. Environmentally, the project has caused widespread concern. Rivers and wetlands have dried up as water is diverted to the north, disrupting ecosystems and threatening biodiversity. Wetlands that once supported migratory birds and other wildlife are now barren. Pollution is another major issue. Industrial waste and untreated sewage have found their way into the canals, compromising water quality. Diseases like schistosomiasis, which are common in the south, now pose a threat to the north as water is transferred. One of the most pressing concerns is seawater intrusion. As the flow of rivers like the Yangtze decreases, salt water from the ocean pushes further inland, threatening freshwater supplies for cities like Shanghai. This issue could worsen as more water is diverted and climate change accelerates. Despite its challenges, the South to North Water Diversion Project has provided undeniable benefits. Over 140 million people now have access to clean water, and cities like Beijing have seen their water supply stabilized. The project has also supported agriculture, ensuring the North China Plain remains a vital breadbasket for the nation. For the Chinese government, this megaproject is more than just a solution to a water crisis. It is a symbol of the country's engineering prowess and determination. Critics, however, argue that the project is a short-term fix for deeper issues. Northern agriculture relies heavily on water-intensive crops like wheat and corn, which could be grown more efficiently in other regions. Urban water systems are outdated, with leaky pipes wasting millions of liters daily. Conservation measures, such as metering and pricing water more effectively, have been slow to take hold due to political and social resistance. The Western route faces even greater scrutiny. Diverting water from the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau would impact transboundary rivers like the Brahmaputra and Mekong, potentially straining relations with neighboring countries. The region's fragile ecosystems and seismic activity add to the risks, raising questions about the project's feasibility and long-term sustainability. Experts have proposed alternatives such as desalination plants, rainwater harvesting, and wastewater recycling. These methods could reduce dependence on large-scale water transfers and provide more localized solutions. However, they also come with their own costs and challenges, and for now, China seems committed to its grand vision. The South to North Water Diversion Project is a testament to China's ambition and ingenuity, but it also raises important questions about sustainability, social impact, and environmental responsibility. Will this project truly solve China's water crisis, or will it create new challenges for future generations? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't miss our video on the Three Gorges Dam, another monumental project with a fascinating history. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to join us on more deep dives into the world's most ambitious engineering projects. See you next time.